Hello and welcome to my video about Gravity Rush Remastered. In this video, I want to introduce you to the game and explain why it's worth playing. Gravity Rush Remastered is an action-adventure game developed by Japan Studio and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. It was originally released for the PlayStation Vita, but was later remastered for the PlayStation 4. Gravity Rush Remaster takes place in the fictional city of Hexaville, which is plagued by something called Gravity Storms. Players take on the role of Cat, a young woman with the ability to manipulate gravity. The game is unique in that it allows players to manipulate gravity in any direction, creating a whole new type of gameplay mechanic. The story of Gravity Rush Remastered revolves around Cat, who wakes up in the floating city of Hexaville with no memories. She meets a black cat named Dusty, who gives her the power to manipulate gravity. Cat decides to use her new power to save Hexaville and its inhabitants and to regain her memories. Along the way, she encounters various characters who help her on her journey. Gravity manipulation is the core mechanic of Gravity Rush Remastered. Using this ability, Cat can fly and even walk on walls and ceilings. She can also attract or repel objects to use them as weapons. The gameplay is smooth and fun, offering many ways to manipulate gravity and experiment. The game also has various challenges and side missions that encourage players to improve their skills, but we talk about those side missions later. In Gravity Rush Remastered, there are various missions that players must complete. These missions are divided into chapters and take players through different areas of Hexaville. In the missions, players must solve puzzles, defeat bosses, and master other challenges. Each mission offers a unique experience and is a blend of story and gameplay. With that said, let's dive right into it. The first episode of Gravity Rush goes over the controls. To begin, press the new game button. After beginning the game, Tap the apple multiple times to begin the opening cutscene. You awake below an apple tree, use the left analog stick to move cat around the environment. Run up the nearby stairs until you come to a door, a mysterious man will ask for cat's help to save his son. Follow him and he will lead you to his son, in a gravity storm. You will then gain control of both the camera and of gravity. Use the right analog stick to move the camera around, and the right bumper slash or one to control gravity. You can use the left bumper slash L1 to return to normal gravity. Follow the waypoints using your gravity shifting powers and go save the boy. After making your way into the town, you'll see a crow fly by and you'll be tasked with following it. This shouldn't be too hard, as the crow will stop for you once you get too far away. After this you'll have to talk to the owner of the crow, and then you'll be treated to a cutscene. And with that we already finished with the first episode, Cat is quickly introduced to a member of the police named Sid, who seems to have gotten into a pickle with some criminals. After helping him out, you must defeat the monsters causing trouble in the city. Attack the Nevi and eventually, you'll come across some flying enemies, unlike ground-based enemies, these enemies require that you use your gravity kick. After dealing with the enemies, you'll be tasked with finding a fountain, which can be found using Cat's map. The officer at the fountain will tell you to collect 10 precious gems. After completing the task, the fountain will begin working and you will gain access to a challenge mission, which we will talk about together with the other challenges and side missions later. The game will explain the upgrade system and then leave you to do whatever you please, you can explore, find gems, or just go to the next episode. After falling into a drain, Cat will find herself in the sewer system. After electing to make one of the pipes your home, you're tasked with finding furniture. After engaging in a short battle with the Nevi, you will have your first piece of furniture, a new chair. Using Cat's stasis field, you can bring the chair back to your new home. Using your map, you can find others with unwanted furniture. After meeting back up with Sid on your travels, he'll direct you towards a comfy little bed surrounded by a horde of Nevi. Take out the monsters and then use the stasis field to move the bed back to your place. After that, you will be treated to a short cutscene and the episode will end. In episode 4, you will meet up with Sid. After talking to him, you will need to head to the church. From here, you will see the item that you need to swap, but the police have heard about aliases, 
one of the game's bigger villains, plan and are on the lookout. You need to get to the statue without alerting any of the police. Shift around the side until Cat says I think I can get up from here. Run up to the statue to change the jewel and take it over to Sid. The cutscene will start showing that Sid is actually alias, and Sid was knocked out. After the cutscene you will need to fight Nebai near the statue. To start this episode, you will travel to the fortune tellers and have a conversation with her. She will give you a note. The note contains Kat's fortune that will help her meet her destiny. First off, you will have to follow a white dove until it stops. From there, you will hear someone crying, follow the marker and you will find a boy who has lost his father. You tell him that you will help find the father. Shift to find a blue flag. From there you will notice red balloons. You will offer to help collect the 7 balloons. After collecting them, you will see an 8th balloon which you will follow until it reaches a man in blue. This man is the boy's father. Use your stasis field to take him to his son. The son will not be there, but a door will be open. Enter the door and explore until Dusty runs off. Chase Dusty and you will find a well. Jump down the well. Here you will meet Gabe the creator. After talking to Gabe, you will transport it back to where you found the boy slash door, but door will have gone. Cat will be transported to the rift plane, and after a short conversation, you will have to defeat the Nevi. After this, the flower will light up, and show you the way to shift. Repeat this process until you find a glowing tree. This tree will give you the special ability of spiraling claw. Continue following the paths and defeating the Nevi, until you meet the boss. This boss is relatively simple. Start with attacking the Nevi's antennas. Once the cores have broken, the Nevi will show his third core. You can now attack this, but be careful to avoid the Nevi's attacks. When the core lights up, it's ready to shoot. When the Nevi's health is low, tap the blue circle to finish it. After the boss battle, you will return to the town. You will now be able to travel to another part of town. To travel there, follow the marker to the train station and travel on top of the train. If you fall off, you will have shift to the next area. Episode 7 starts with Cat meeting Newt at the uniform shop. Newt tells Cat about his friend Echo, who has disappeared. Once the conversation finishes, Cat will be wearing a school uniform. The mission starts with talking to students about the whereabouts of Echo. Some students will offer information while most won't. One student will be suspicious and will ask you three questions. The answers are Fire Arquibus Academy Left Hand After answering the questions, you will have to travel to the school to meet back up with Newt. After shifting around the school to look for Echo, you will meet May, who will tell you where Echo is. Once you travel to the marker, the cutscene will start. At the end of the cutscene, you will have to chase the spider Nevi that is Echo. While chasing the Nevi, you need to attack the cores on the Nevi's back while avoiding Echo. If Echo's infection level reaches 100, the mission will fail, and you will have to start the Nevi chase again. At times, the Nevi will stop and attack you. Continue to attack the cores and avoid Echo and its attacks. Once the Nevi's health is low enough, touch the blue circle, and the episode will end. Start off by talking to Gade, and he will send you back to the Rift Plains, this time to the Inferno. The strategy for this area is the same as the last Rift Plane in Episode 6. Defeat the Nevi and follow the path from the flower. The times you need to shift are long, so it is advisable to use the wooden areas to refill your meter. In one of the areas, you will come across a skill tree that gives you Gravity Typhoon. Keep progressing through the planes until you meet Raven. To defeat Raven, use your special abilities and try to avoid her attacks. Finish her off with gravity kicks and press the circle to end the battle. After the episode, a new area will be available, adding the airliner transport. You will start this episode after speaking to Sid. You will agree to help patrol after rumors of Alias plotting another theft. Follow the markers until explosions are seen around the city. You will be told about a bomb that has been planted and you have to find it. 
Follow the marker and you will find the bomb in a dumpster. Use your stasis field to empty the dumpster. Continue to do this until you are able to pick it up and take it to Chaz, who will disarm it. After a cutscene with Sid, you will be prompted to go and defeat Nebi attacking the police. After defeating them, you will have to save three policemen from towers. When you find them, pick them up and take them to the marker slash red flashing area. After saving the three policemen, you will be asked to travel to the location of the gym, but Alias will have beaten you there. After a cutscene, follow Alias and defeat the Nevi that he unleashes. Alias will now summon a boss Nevi, which is simple to defeat, but the boss's head sway, meaning you will often fly past the heads. When the cords on the Nevi's head are broken, the Nevi will fall and this will allow Cat to attack Alias. The Nevi will get back up and you will need to repeat the previous attacks. Once Alias' health is low enough, you will be prompted to finish him. Find Gate and he will transport Cat to the Rift Plains. This area plays out the same as the other two. Defeat the Nevi, follow the flower's light, and repeat. But this time, Dusty isn't feeling too great, and shifting will use up your gauge a lot quicker than normal. Use the mushrooms to get around and only shift when you have to. You will find another glowing tree. This time, Cat will learn the micro black hole special. After finding the boss Nevi, you will first need to defeat the Nevi that are on the pillar. Before finishing them off, Cat will not be able to attack the boss's core. Attack the core, and touch the circle to finish it off. After completing episode 10, this episode will start immediately. The boss Nevi that you just defeated is back and has made it to the city, bringing a lot of reinforcements. Fight the Nevi until you see a cutscene introducing the military. After the cutscene, you will have to defeat the Nevi on the pillar again to get to the boss's core. In addition to the Nevi on the pillar, there are ones in the air that can damage Cat if she is not careful. Attack the core and press the circle when prompted to finish it off. After arriving at Vincenter, Cat encounters a girl who informs her about a lost letter and requests her assistance to find it. Follow the markers until you enter a tunnel, where you will temporarily lose the ability to shift. Cat must navigate through the area by collecting gems while evading the Nevi. Once at the bottom, she enters another tunnel, and her powers will be restored. Continue following the markers through the tunnel, collecting crystals and avoiding the Nevi. Upon exiting the tunnel, Cat's powers will be fully restored. Follow the markers again and enter another tunnel, but this time, Cat will keep her powers intact. As you progress, a cutscene will begin, and Raven will make an appearance. Cat must descend to the bottom while dodging Raven's attacks. Continue falling until a cutscene begins, bringing the episode to a close. This episode will start immediately after the conclusion of episode 12. Jump repeatedly to break the cage and follow the markers to try and find Dusty. Along the path, there are children guarding. Wait for them to turn their back and run past them. Continue on, and a cutscene will start with Zaza. After the cutscene, Nevi will appear and Kat has to defeat them all. Once all are defeated, the episode will conclude. Travel to Zaza and start a cutscene. After the cutscene, Kat will be given the task of defeating the Nushi. The Nushi can only be attacked when it stops to unleash its power beam, revealing its core on the back of its head. Repeat this until its health is depleted while avoiding its attacks. After a cutscene and the arrival of Raven, Kat needs to attack the Nushi and then lead it to Raven, who will also attack the Nushi. Repeat this until the Nushi retreats. Travel to the marker where you will find Cyanea, who will reveal herself to be a creator. Cyanea will then transport Cat to another world. While in this world, Cat won't be able to use her powers and must rely on other methods to solve individual puzzles. The goal is for Cat to make her way to the female figure. Due to her lack of powers, Cat must use gravity transporters to progress. There are a total of 7 areas, each of which focuses on positioning and timing. 
make sure to explore the environment and find all the gravity transporters. After reaching the castle, a cutscene will start, and Cat will be brought out of the vision, ending the episode. The Nushi will appear again. This time, it has come back stronger. Cat will need to break the cores on the Nushi while avoiding its attacks. Once all the cores are broken, the Nushi will return to its old movements. It will show a core on the back of the head again, but only when unleashing its power beam. Continue to attack and press the blue finish circle when prompted. The cutscene will start with Raven and Cat transporting the children back to Hexaville. Episode 17 follows Cat's journey back to Hexaville. Shift up, avoiding any nevi you come across, and follow the marker. Once inside the tunnel, continue shifting until Cat mentions hearing a voice. Follow the marker to find a man and use your stasis field to help him travel up the tunnel. Follow the marker and place him in the flashing area. Once the nevi appear, defeat them to progress. Continue upwards and defeat more nevi to exit the tunnel. Keep following the marker until a cutscene starts, explaining what has happened in the time Cat has been away. Cat meets a scientist in Vincenter who requires her help. He first asks Cat to retrieve his briefcase that he dropped. Follow the marker, defeat the Nevi, and return the briefcase to the scientist. Next, the scientist asks Cat to place four sensors. Use Cat's stasis field to pick up a sensor and follow the marker to place it. At some of the markers, Nevi will appear, and Cat will have to defeat them before being able to place the sensor. If Cat loses a sensor, she can travel back to the scientist, who is spares. The scientist then asks Cat to turn one of the sensors on. Follow the marker and after Cat turns it on, Nevi will appear that must be defeated. Once again, return to the scientist. The scientist now has another sensor that needs to be placed above. Fight the Nevi to clear the area and place the sensor. Once the sensor is placed, more Nevi will appear. This can be difficult due to the number of Nevi attacking Cat at once. Make use of the health crystals around in Cat's special attacks. Once the Nevi have been defeated, the scientist asks for a lift to the airboat. Cat takes him to a few places before ending the episode at the airboat. Cat wakes up to find Dusty has split into 20 Dusties. Cat has to find the 20 Dusties to regain her powers. The first 10 Dusties are easy to find. After finding the first 10, Cat's powers will return, but Nevi will start to appear and you will need to defeat the Nevi to collect more Dusties. Once you have defeated the Nevi in an area, markers will appear showing you where the Dusties are. After collecting all the Dusties, 4 more Nevi will appear and after defeating them, tap the blue finisher circle to defeat the cat-like Nevi. At the start of the episode, Cat will have to fight off the Nevi with the help of an enemy. Continue defeating the Nevi until you reach around 30 kills, and Nemini will kill a lot for you, after which a cutscene will start. After the cutscene, Cat will have to fight Unica. Unica isn't very strong but is very mobile, which draws the battle out. Evader attacks at the start and use special attacks on her. Continue to use gravity kicks on Unica until she goes into overdrive. After going into overdrive, Unica will become faster but will still stop to allow Cat to attack. Continue until you have to finish the battle. At the beginning of the episode, Cat needs to fight off the out of control anemone with the help of Unica. Keep attacking the anemone until a cutscene starts. During the cutscene, Unica will reveal a Nevi core, which Cat needs to attack until it breaks and triggers another cutscene. The anemone will now have 3 cores, and Cat needs to attack all of them until they break. Eventually, the anemone will attach to the clock tower, making it unreachable for Cat to attack. Keep attacking it until another cutscene. After the cutscene, Cat will have 5 minutes to stop the anemone from destroying Hexaville. Keep attacking it until it's at around 50% health, at which point it will activate its shields, which will harm Cat. After a short time, Unica and Raven will instruct Cat to lure the anemone towards them. Shift over to either of them, and they will make the anemone drop its shield, allowing Cat to attack it. Repeat this process until Cat lowers its health. 
Once his health is depleted, Cat will be prompted to finish it off by tapping on the blue circle. After this, a final cutscene will start, and the credits will roll. But wait! We haven't even talked about the side missions! Well, the video is getting way too long for my taste and I promise that I will show them to you someday! In another video! I'm sorry but it has to be done! Don't worry, the side missions are not story relevant! They are just small standalone side stories that don't have much to do with the main plot, and that is what makes the side missions perfect for an extra video in the future! Conclusion! Overall! Gravity Rush Remastered is a great game that's worth playing due to its unique gameplay mechanic and interesting story. Gravity manipulation is well executed, and the gameplay is smooth and fun. The missions are varied and offer many opportunities to manipulate gravity and improve skills. If you're a fan of action-adventure games and haven't had a chance to play Gravity Rush Remastered yet, you should definitely give it a try. If you have watched the video up until this point, I want to do more than just thank you and hope that if you enjoyed the video, you would consider subscribing to my channel. With that, I bid you farewell and hope to see you again in the next video.